you can't do anything in a forest you under, understand the species, the meaning it's there, where it grows, why it grows, how it seeds, how it reproduces, and why is it protecting an understory of fabulous understory herbs I can use to make medicine and have a business. And how long did that take? Um, still happening. So that's a process of evolving, but I'm sure now I'm light years away from when I first entered this place as a 19, 20 year old kid trying to go, what am I doing? What do I have to do? I have to understand the forest. I under have to understand lots of things. How to rebuild buildings. How do they use those buildings? Rebuild a house. It's all part of the same thing. The forest has ended up being my major focus in life because of all it provides. Trees provide everything. They provide the shade for these ginseng plants I just walked through up there. Some of those are four prongers. That means they're 10 to 12 years old. They wouldn't be there without these trees. I wouldn't be here without these trees. Each of these species, everyone you see, provides a home, provides food for something. That's really important. The minute you break the chain, it all starts crumbling. What happens to those species? What happens to me? I'm always between steward and student, and then what do I do with the information? Do I find new herbs and make medicines? But what I found now, I make medicines with students. I garden students. So the forest is perfect for that, because you bring students into a forest, their eyes are wide open, they look, they look at this cave, you have their rapt attention. So I've been given a great classroom to make changes in the world I want to. The first work was always about the plants and buildings at the time because I had to create a home. And to create a home, I was given uh, a farm with 80, 85 acres. That was the original acres I bought. Had all its mineral rights, which is really big in Appalachia because you're standing on seams of gas, seams of coal, seams of limestone, which is why Appalachia has always been taken advantage of. So it started with learning the plants, and that was a slow process. And then I had to make a home for myself. I lived in a teepee for the first year or two that I was rebuilding the house and rebuilding the barn. And lucky while I was doing that, because that's part of stewardship also, is redoing something that's worked for 100 years. This is a 150-year-old farm. So I was also inheriting a heritage of that. And even though my house is 150 years old and I think I've done everything, well, it's always degrading at the same time. So, And now I'm seeing a lot of degradation in the forest ecology also. And uh, we talked about the emerald ash border, or we talked uh, about sassafras and pioneer species like locusts going backwards now. And so my view is totally different of what it was. And it's not always excitement, it's now trepidation. What am I going to do with all these dying trees as they fall over the trails? What's the place going to look like? And do I have to run a chainsaw to I'm 100 years old to keep this place clear? So I'm in change right now, even though seeing the path I took was a good path. But having the opportunity to talk the truth, the truth I see about the green earth, to people, and that's the best I can do right now, is to teach young kids or younger students, hey, all this is sacred. And if we don't have it and we don't protect it, it's a huge, huge loss. lucky enough not to just always grow plants and if you look around me I was given plants I was given a forest I was given fields to work with so a lot of those plants were there and most of the plants I use are wild plants I started this business in my mind when I made my first salve in 1978 The original business happened um, with a dear friend of mine and a woman I was married to. Um, and we sat down together and took what I already had, which is a drive to be an herbalist and becoming an herbalist and a golden set. And I just started selling that and I thought it was really brilliant. So Richard was a naturopathic physician. Val was an emergency uh, uh, doctor. 
and a midwife. So the three of us are dear friends and had a lot to share. And I was visiting Richard in Hawaii one year, and Val and I and Richard were talking, well, maybe we better make a company. And I had the idea of making a home herbal health chest. So there was a book, 15 tinctures, and there's a salve and rescue him, and a really good idea. And we sat down at his place in Puko, Hawaii, right off the ocean, started talking about it. The minute we put pen to paper, Hawaii is volcanic, there was an earthquake. That moment, we're sitting around a table, rocking. Looked out, waves aren't coming for us. That's when the business started happening, and that's the earthquake kind of signified that. And then people's lives went on. This place became the home of that because of the herbs I have, and I could turn a, a, a corn crib into an apothecary. So Richard stayed in Hawaii, and after a while it was obvious that, here I am, Val and I separated, so that was a change. And then here I am doing all of that now. But now I have the advantage of my daughter moving to the farm, and she's perfect for this and really helps me out. So now I have someone to bounce things off and someone also to send out into the world as a green emissary, who's not me, but is her and is totally green and taking over the business and learning to be an herbologist and teaching uh, yoga. And so it's changed again and it's at a really great place. So with a community of like-minded people, almost anything's possible. Split that in half. Yeah, basically. I, that I can do with my fingers. Yeah. I can just do I began working with the land, I would say as a child, because so much of this work is based on your relationship to the land and your relationship to the plants. And I began building that foundation as a child. My playground was the woods, but also then through coming out here two days a week, growing up and spending time in the woods with Paul and learning about plants, I began that work. Throughout high school and college, I continued to dive deeper with him, um, coming out here and interning. And then after I graduated from the University of Colorado Boulder, I moved on to the farm and really began uh, my work with the land in a, a bigger way. I would like to be growing all of the herbs that we are using in our products you know, to sustain us economically. Part of my work here on the land is uh, running Sassafras Camp. It's a nature and arts camp that focuses on environmental education, so like taking children out into the woods, learning about these plants, learning about conservation and why it's important. My mom started the camp back in 93 and she ran it for 13 years and then stopped and I brought it back when I moved onto the farm and now this is my fifth year as director. I would like to expand that into teens and other, um, other groups of even adults, just exposing people to nature and educating them about plants and the earth. <laughs>